Good evening, Westworld fans. James Hancock here. Back to review episode four of season two, an episode called The Riddle of the Sphinx. As a kid, I was a giant Greek mythology freak, so I was immediately intrigued by the title of this episode. And tonight's episode was practically a feature film. It ran about 75 minutes or so, which is actually the running time that a lot of movies used to have back in the 30s. And for people who've been lighting up the message boards for the last week with all their theories, this episode both confirmed a lot of theories as well as destroyed a lot of them. But I think it's important for our reviews of each episode of Westworld to be about more than which theories turned out to be true because at this point, there's so much speculation about each episode. It's almost like every permutation and combination of where the show could possibly go has been hypothesized by an enthusiastic fan. So I feel like no matter where the season goes, somebody is probably articulated it. But it must be a genuinely surreal experience for the writers of the show who have written and shot all these episodes months back as they sit back and just watch this insane debate unfold. Then again, I guess it has to be enormously satisfying for a writer to see such extraordinary enthusiasm for something they've created. This episode, as long as it was, kept its attention on a few central characters. We got nothing with Maeve and we got nothing with Dolores, but we got a whole hell of a lot of information about the man in black, Bernard, James Dellis, as well as a few surprise appearances by characters who I did not expect to see, like Elsie. One of my favorite theories for the last couple of episodes has been that Elsie was somehow secretly in charge of the Ghost Nation, and that she had reprogrammed the Ghost Nation to do her bidding. The truth is, we don't really know why the Ghost Nation is killing hosts and not people. But as we learned in this episode, Elsie has not been manipulating the Ghost Nation. She's been tied up in a cave. And one of my favorite theories that I've been really pushing for the last couple of episodes also turned out to be false. I thought all the information stored inside Abernathy's head must be Jim Dellis. But as we saw in this episode, what he contains in his mind is probably the entire stored memory and data and experiences of all the guests from the last couple of decades. At least that's what I'm assuming. Because we do in fact see what James Dellis has been up to for the last couple of decades since his demise. But there was so much about this episode that it almost felt like like a sci-fi horror hybrid. But when you see what William and his mad scientists have been up to, trying to find a way to bring James Dellis back for good, initially it's actually quite beautiful. We see him living in this pristine environment. He's listening to the Rolling Stones, and he seems to be enjoying a degree of health. But we see in a series of interviews with William where they have the precise same conversation over and over again that basically they've tried and failed well over 100 times at this point to bring Dellis back to life. They keep getting a little bit better at it, but even after decades, they're only able to keep him around for about 35 days before he starts to fall to pieces. They call it a cognitive plateau before this degradation begins. And as we see at the climax of the episode, when he's left to degrade entirely, the results are truly horrific. And speaking of horrific, this show just keeps finding new ways to present absolutely disgusting imagery. It's imagery that I really enjoy because I am a fan of horrific imagery and I'm a fan of westerns. But one of my favorite images yet is when you see the man in black and Lawrence riding along and they see a railroad under construction. But in addition to its normal construction, you can see that they're hammering the stakes into people to build the railroad. That probably wouldn't create the strongest foundation if a train were to try to use those tracks. But it does create a very memorable impression on the viewer. But for me, the most disturbing imagery of this episode are all the scenes in this lab where we see Bernard and the drone hosts conducting a series of experiments. We saw a brief taste of it in the previous episode, but we finally get to spend a lot of time in the lab because Clementine drags Bernard to this cave where Elsie has been tied up. After some initial justifiable mistrust, Bernard convinces Elsie to stick with him also because he desperately needs her help. He's kind of starting to fall to pieces as well. And he needs some more cortical fluid in order to keep going because of the wound to his head. He's lost a lot of the cortical fluid. But because Bernard's memories are all kind of sliding in and out of one another, he has, very, he has a very hard time staying in the present without drifting into flashbacks forward and backward. He does remember where this lab is. So he and Elsie go inside. They fix him up. They give him the necessary cortical fluid. But then Elsie decides that she wants to dig a lot deeper into what this lab was for and which living creature still might be trapped within. But we get a few scenes with the Ghost Nation that will torpedo some of the theories, but also confirm some of the theories from the previous episode. We see that Ashley Stubbs was basically one of their captives for a very long time since the previous season. But Grace, the character who escaped from the Raj in the previous episode, she's lumped in alongside them. And there we see that the Ghost Nation is in fact killing hosts not people. So it, it remains to be seen what the Ghost Nation is actually up to. But Grace does successfully escape. But as a diehard fan of Westerns, and basically from the late 30s to the early 70s, there are dozens, if not hundreds, of Westerns that I intensely admire. But some of the more enjoyable scenes of this episode were those that take place in the village where Lawrence is from. Craddock and all of his confederados have basically taken the place over. And as a way of stalling for time, 
The man in black decides to pretend as if he's going to not only supply them with weapons, but also act as a guide on the way to glory. And we see Craddock is just turning into a total sociopath. He finds a bottle of nitro, and he immediately sets to work just abusing the hell out of people. One of the more imaginative but disgusting images is when he puts a shot glass of nitro in a man's hand, makes him measure out 12 paces, but when he successfully does so, Craddock just pulls out his rifle and blows the guy's hand off. But Craddock is one of these classic guys who's got a lot of swagger and a lot of confidence, and he thinks that death's on his side because he kills so many people with such style but then the man in black shows us what a ruthless total hardcore badass he truly is i'm always flip-flopping on my favorite characters of the show sometimes it's Maeve, sometimes it's dolores but this episode was hard not to be 100 percent in the man in black's corner because he basically puts craddock in his place and says you think you know death but you didn't even recognize him when he's been sitting across from you this whole time not only does the man in black lay waste to all the confederados, he force feeds some of the nitro to Craddock and then hands a rifle to Lawrence and allows Lawrence just to blow Craddock up. I mean, I see in a lot of Westerns with a lot of clever, imaginative ways to kill people, but that was the first time I've seen someone explode from nitro within their guts. Dramatically, probably the most interesting scene in the episode, though, is when we see William as an old man, basically, at some point in the not-so-recent past, still dressed in black, but in everyday modern era clothes. And he goes to visit James Delos and basically says that Logan died of an overdose a long time ago, that Jim's daughter committed suicide, that basically no one's coming to save him, and that the world's basically better off with Delos dead. And then William even freely admits maybe the world's better off without him as well, and that he's having deep reservations and second thoughts about the entire Westworld enterprise and that maybe it all needs to burn down. And a lot of people have hypothesized that's where this show is going with the Man in Black playing out Ford's game to the end and then just burning it all down to the ground. But as a way of twisting the knife just a little bit further, William tells the technician just to let Delos degrade all the way to the end as a way of studying what happens as opposed to burning out the room like they typically do whenever they see that one of his bodies has not quite worked out. Which brings us full circle back to Elsie and Bernard. And they see the consequences of what happens with these strange human-host hybrids that are just not quite working out. In spite of all the decades of experimentation, they have not unlocked the keys to immortality. Or if they are in fact immortal, it's in no form or shape that you want to find yourself because we see that Jim Delos has been like carving carving lines in his face and that he's ripped the place to pieces that he's murdered the technician it almost looks like something out of like a Clive Barker movie now I was a big fan of like Nightbreed and Hellraiser back in the day and I love seeing a show like Westworld do a little bit of genre hopping but after Bernard and Elsie have managed to dispose of Delos's body he remembers that he created another control unit for another human and I think this is where the fan theories are gonna really go berserk off the top of my head I would assume perhaps it would be William's wife who committed suicide maybe they've been experimenting with Logan but something tells me it's gonna be a character that we've already seen before or if they really wanted to make Westworld fans happy and bring back one of the best actors in the show it could be Ford himself which would give Anthony Hopkins a chance to be back in the show for good but we get this great bit where Bernard tells Elsie repeatedly that he can be trusted and that she needs to give him a chance to become the person he might be able to become now that he has free will. And as he's describing to her how she can feel safe around him, we see in his head that he and the drone hosts were the ones who were responsible for murdering all the lab technicians. I mean, Bernard was already one of the most interesting characters in the show, but now he's becoming increasingly dangerous as well. In any case, something tells me that we haven't seen the last of Ford before the end of the season. Although we do get a little taste of Ford when he speaks to the voice of a young girl who tells the man in black that if he's looking forward, he's looking in the wrong direction. And the subsequent scene may be confirmation of that because we see as the man in black and his forces ride off into the sunset. And it's just absolutely stunning, gorgeous stuff. It's the kind of scene that would make John Ford proud. They find Grace, who has escaped, and Grace greets the old William as her father. So after a very solid episode, and a very long episode, but a very enjoyable one, I feel like that was the perfect cliffhanger. And we saw in the teaser for the next episode, we're going to be getting a ton of Shogun World, where it appears as if Maeve is dramatically increasing her skills and her influence. It wouldn't surprise me at all if the entire episode is set completely in Shogun World. Because I feel like Maeve definitely hasn't had enough screen time yet this season, at least as far as I'm concerned. So we're not quite at the halfway mark of season two, but I feel like as we see the story unfold, certain forks in the road story-wise are being eliminated, and we're starting to narrow down on what the central storyline is going to be. But as always, I welcome in the comments below any and all theories about where the show might be going, in particular, who this other control unit that Bernard was working on might be. But if you enjoyed my recap and review, please consider subscribing to my channel. But if you want to talk more, give me a shout on Twitter at Colbrax. That's always the best place to find me. And I'll be counting down the days till the next episode of my favorite show on TV. But I really appreciate you watching my video. And as always, onwards and upwards.